sure that everybody's got their cell phones on silent, please, before we get started. We're good, Victor? Everybody good? Everybody good? All right. Good afternoon. Um, on Monday, uh, the mayor and I and our homicide stood in front of you and asked for uh, and delivered some really tragic news uh, of uh, a little girl who was tragically murdered. Um, and we asked for your help. Her name was uh, Jocelyn Nungary, and she was 12 years old. We started to work, and we've been working around the clock since that time, trying to find out what happened to her and who was responsible and to get them off the street. I want to thank our homicide team, our North Belt crime suppression teams, our gang division, our SWAT team, and Metro PD, who all came together as we looked for this for the guys that did this, the suspects in this horrible murder, um, and we were all out there. In fact, uh, the mayor was with me on Tuesday night late as we were going through and, and looking to see if we could find anything else. And the teams were out there, and they were scouring every potential video feed, and they were talking to everybody possible that might have seen something or heard something. And their hard work paid off because we were able to find video and get trace the movements of our suspects and our, our, uh, of Jocelyn and all the way to the point of where she was murdered and left in a bayou in the water. So that's the hard work that they did. We asked for the public's help and the public came through too. People stepped up, people called. And we are still asking for more help from the public for anybody that might have seen something or might know something, however small, to reach out to us. And I'll have homicide give you the numbers. Lieutenant Hope will give you the numbers on who to call for that. You can even call anonymously, but we really need all the help from all the public and how and to make sure that we have the very best solid case so these individuals do not get released back into the field, back into the public where they could hurt other people. So that is my ask of you. About an hour ago, I talked to Ms. Nungary, Ale Jocelyn's mother, Alexis, She's been very brave, but she is still devastated. Her little girl's gone. And now they're trying to figure out what, how to take care of her and, and to uh, arrange, arrange funeral arrangements and, and, and try to heal for something you really can't heal from. And we understand that because we all, many of us have kids and cannot imagine the pain that they're going through. So I ask you to still pray for them immensely. Um, they're going through a really trying time. And uh, as Houstonians, and this public, I know that we have fantastic people here. Keep praying for the, the Nungary family. I want to turn it over to the mayor to make a few comments. And then followed by that, we'll have Lieutenant Hope to give you more details on the investigation and how it's played out thus far, the things that we can share. But please understand there are still things we cannot share for the purposes of the investigation. I know you all understand that. And then we're going to deli do, uh, deliver this in Spanish. Uh, with Commander Garcia, who will, who will offer comments in Spanish, and then we'll take questions from there. So with that, Mayor. Thank you, Chief. I'm here uh, because of the seriousness of this case and my personal interest as the mayor, as a grandfather and a father. It doesn't get any worse. I'm here primarily, though, to emphasize three points. Our condolences to the family. When I spoke to Ms. Ngari about an hour ago, she was at the funeral home. I'm concerned about their economic circumstances and also to let them know that all of Houston, all the investigators, their neighbors, the retail merchants in the area, everyone that came forward with information. As the chief mentioned, I was there the night before last. This North Belt Crime Suppression Group, 
You don't want to mess with them. They were out on the streets, going up and down every street in every direction from the incident and the scene of the crime. I've watched homicide work around the clock all night long. I've seen SWAT show up to make certain that they were apprehended properly. So the first thing I want to emphasize is the condolences. The family, as the chief said, is devastated. I've spoken with an uncle. If you just put yourself in their place, they don't know which way to turn. They have very limited resources, but they're strong, they're brave. The mother just wants to see her baby. Hasn't been able to examine the body due to the investigation, but she's making arrangements as we talk. Number two, and I just touched on it briefly, but I want to expound on it, the police work. I want Houstonians to know, be proud and excited about your police department. The men and women go to work, they have families, but they are so passionate about their work, so professional. And it does aggravate me when some sources say, we've got to restore our confidence in the police. No, the confidence is there. I've witnessed it. I'm sharing it with Houstonians. All the resources necessary, collaboration, the scene of the crime, and we're seeing the result of this hard, old-fashioned police work using social media, new technologies, but also just footwork and collaboration, language, language skills. You couldn't be more proud of the police department and we're seeing living evidence of it as I stand before you. And number three, I want to reach out to the court system, the justice system. We're going to be watching you. The arrest has taken place. The charges have been filed. Now we want the justice system to do its job. If there was ever a circumstance where you do not give someone bail, this is it. There are circumstances allowed that you can prevent bail. Take in consideration flight risk. Take in consideration the severity of this crime. So I'm going to be monitoring the court system. I want these suspects to have their day in court. I want them to be held accountable, and I want it done sooner than later. That said, I'll yield to Lieutenant Hope, who has really led a very effective investigation. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. And thank you, everyone, for being here today. Yes, ma'am. My name is Stephen Hope, S-T-E-P-H-E-N, last name Hope, H-O-P-E. So I'm here today because our team has worked tirelessly tracking evidence in this case since the discovery of Jocelyn by a, city, a citizen on the morning of June 17, 2024. Because of the assistance of the area community and surveillance video that our officers have tirelessly tracked down and other evidentiary pieces, we have found and learned that the suspects began their evening at a Northboro area restaurant together. They left that restaurant on foot southbound. The suspects continued south and were first seen on a camera, and those are the images that we released to you, to, uh, to all of you and to the public. Suspects seen meeting the victim and talking for a few minutes while they were on Kirkendall. Later, the suspects and the victim walked together to a convenience store, and those images were also released to you guys and the public. After a few minutes, all three together walked to a bridge where ultimately Jocelyn was murdered. Suspects continue south towards their residence after leaving Jocelyn there. I want to thank the media for their assistance in greatly and broadly releasing the images of the suspects. I want to thank all the witnesses who have been brave coming forward, talking to the police and giving us the information that we needed to identify these suspects. So that on this morning, Thursday, June 20th, officers with the Houston SWAT team, gang division, North Belt division, and homicide did a coordinated operation at 13355 Northboro Drive, the Canfield Lake Apartments. And there we were able to find the two suspects, detain them, and transport them back here to Travis for questioning. While there, CSU continued to process their location, searching for more evidence, which they have found. The suspects are now facing charges of capital murder, 
one being Johan Jose Rangel Martinez, the second male being Franklin Jose Pena Romos. It's because of the hard work of my police officers, the teams, the media, and the uh, uh, community at large that we were able to do this. And I'm very proud of everyone who was involved. Thank you. Johan Jose Rangel Martinez, J O H A N J O S E R A N G E L M A R T I N E Z, and Franklin Jose Pena Romox, F R A N K L I N J O S E P E N A R A M O S. And we will be updating you guys with images once the booking process is completed. Yes. Thank you. We're just going to release the ages. Martinez is 21 years old and Ramos is uh, 26 years old. Buenas tardes. Uh, a nombre del jefe de la policía, Satterwhite, y del alcalde, Whitmire, acabamos de recibir las noticias de que gracias a los esfuerzos de todos los policías involucrados en este caso, tanto de la división de, homic de homicidios como de la división de pandillas, el equipo de SWAT y el equipo de patrulla del norte de la ciudad, hemos localizado, hemos entrevistado y se le han levantado cargos a las dos personas responsables por el asesinato de esta pequeña de 12 años, Jocelyn Nuncaray. Tanto el jefe como el alcalde han estado en comunicación con la madre de, de esta pequeña, de nuestra víctima, y ahorita en estos momentos la madre está tratando de hacer arreglos con, para transportar el cuerpo de la niña. Lo que sí podemos compartir con ustedes es de que cuando los detectives uh, dieron a conocer las fotos de los sospechosos, eso, eso nos apoyó porque hubo testigos que los reconocieron, esos testigos se comunicaron con la policía y pudimos localizarlos y pudimos uh, arrestarlos. Como dije anteriormente, la Procuraduría ha aceptado cargos por asesinato eh, del mayor, uh, el mayor nivel posible. Uh, estos individuos llevan de nombre Johan José Rangel Martínez, de 21 años de edad, y Franklin José Peña Ramos, de 26 años de edad. Aún queremos que la comunidad nos siga apoyando. Necesitamos más testigos, porque el caso siguiente, lo que, lo que ahora sigue, es uh, la cuestión de, del juicio ante las cortes. Entre más testigos tengamos, más fuerte va a ser el caso contra estos individuos. Así que continuamos pidiéndole a la gente que si sabe algo, por favor comuníquese con la División de Homicidios al 713-308-3600 o pueden hablarle a Crime Stoppers, pueden permanecer anónimos. Nosotros no vamos a saber quiénes están hablando, pero... Ustedes pueden dar la información que tienen al 713-222-TIPS. Muchas gracias. ¿Preguntas? ¿Cuestiones? Well, no, 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 no. We're still doing um, a lot of that investigation. Uh, we, have, we have performed, a, sender, uh, submitted for a sexual assault kit to be performed, the same kit on her. Uh, so that is still pending. And for everything else, uh, it was a horrible scene. But in, um, in, in careful, care of the investigation, that's as far as I'll go with it. And then uh, we're told that one of the suspects had possible bite marks on his neck. Any self-defense wounds do you believe that there was a struggle here? So again, at, at this point, there's there's things I can release that we will release, and things that we want. All of that, uh, what you know, the condition of her, 
more specifically uh, of the suspects, all of those things will come out in time. But for now, we are not confirming uh, those, any details. And, and to be fair about what you just described, I don't have any information on that. Homicide might. But again, we're trying to make sure that we're being as careful with this investigation to get it all right. So I can't confirm anything at this time. It is said that Martinez and Ramos are Venezuelan. Can you confirm that? And what is your We are, we have reached out to Homeland Security Investigations, HSI, uh, and they are conducting that part of the investigation in terms of their status and legality here and those types of things. So. Uh, I would defer to them and defer you to them on the, for confirmation of those things. And to be clear, were the roommates living in the same unit? It appears they that they were all residing in the same apartment, yes. Okay, so, and do we know how long they have lived in the area in that particular apartment? Uh, I, do, I don't know that for sure. We think maybe one a matter of months, but the other far less. And the lieutenant painted a very nice picture, and thank you for that, with regards to what took place to this tragic ending. But if you can't, can you provide us exactly about how long it took from the meeting to the bridge? Yes. Um, so it was in the evening of the 16th that they left that uh, restaurant. It was during the nighttime, midnight hour almost, that they were walking. Um, and we believe that it wasn't until shortly after 1 to 2 o'clock that they were at the bridge. So it was within a span of three, four hours. And, and is there a <clears throat> relationship between Jocelyn and these two men? How did they know each other? So as far as we can tell right now, the communication between everyone is still a part of the investigation. Um, we've worked really, really hard to get to this point, um, but a mountain of work stands before us to be able to document and look through everything that we have left. We know, we know that she lived in an apartment. It was, was it at the same complex or was it a different? No, it was a different. So when you mentioned that there's evidence that was found in the apartments, can you give details? I that? cannot. Were, were, have these two been cooperative with you guys at all? Yes, they have been talking with us, and we are taking statements and talking with them, and as soon as we're done and they are booked in, like I said, we will get the pictures to you and make sure that everything How that you need. How crack the case? Was there someone who called the police? We, the so I'm actually really, really proud of the Houston citizens. I'm actually very proud of you guys, the media. It is all of the above. With all the effort that you guys put into getting the images of the individuals out to the public in a broad scape, with all the people who worked with us, the community members up in the Northboro area, the statements from witnesses, you know, I can't just stress enough that every piece of this was all together. Let me, if I could follow up on that question real fast. One at a time. Lieutenant, if I could follow up on that question there. What was the threshold that was crossed to where you were able to charge them with murder? And I, I have to say it's all of it together. It's the totality of every piece of the evidence together. Once it brought it all into one place, then we were able to grab, get, find them, find out who they are, link them to the location and to the actual incident itself. So no type of confession or anything like that from either one of them? So the actual like statements that they've made is going to be a part of the investigation, and I can't go into that. Let's get another question on this end over here, please. In relation to that question, what makes it a capital murder? That yes. The, in commission of another felony? No, actually the age of the victim in Texas state law is all we need for it to be a capital. Uh, under the age of 15, any murder is a capital murder. You said the gang unit was involved. Is, were they just involved in the apprehension or is they a part of the investigation? So they actually assisted us greatly in me reaching out with the community itself and then also with surveillance and uh, in the apprehension of the so individuals. Did you say anything? No, not that I know of. And that's still you actually have video of all three at the bridge? You have so the specifics of the actual surveillance videos, I cannot divulge at this time. Um, I do let you know that we have evidence that compels us to believe that everyone was together throughout the entire course of this event. The mayor had mentioned that she was on the phone with her boyfriend uh, around midnight that night. Did he ever call police about the, any concerns? Again, like all of the communication portions, uh, electronic or digital otherwise is all being scoured. That's part of like the mountain of information that we have to still go through and document. Have the parents of the 13 year old been cooperated with you all? Uh, Extremely. We looked at some a couple, couple more guys. Videos that couple show more. An HPD unit in, in the parking lot between the 7 Eleven and the bridge around 12.06 a.m. Uh, Monday. Was that in any relation to Jocelyn? Or, or anything related to this case? Not that I know of. Okay. Mayor, you mentioned holding the 
keeping your eye on the courts. Are you going to go to court to see the No, decision? I'm just simply saying that we have a justice system, and I think justice delayed is uh, not good. So this is uh, such an horrendous mm -hmm. crime that uh, I don't want to see these individuals on bond on the streets of Houston, if at all possible. We'll leave that to the judgment of the magistrate and the judges. But uh, from my experience, uh, capital murders, murders in general on bond are some of our higher risk individuals, dangerous to law enforcement, when they jump bond, they know there's a warrant for their arrest. They don't want to be apprehended, and that leads to violence, not to mention the exposure to the citizens of Houston. So all I'm saying is the police are doing their job. The public's cooperated. The media's cooperated. Charges have been filed. So now let's do not delay accountability. Give them a fair trial they're entitled to, but hold them accountable by the judge in the justice system. So I will be monitoring it because, in general, I'm concerned about the delay of trials in Harris County. Approximately 900 individuals are on the street of Houston today charged with murder or capital murder, waiting to go to court. And as I've said, it's one of the more dangerous profile that you could have in our community that uh, many of them are fugitives. We don't even know where they are. So I want to let Houstonians know I'll be monitoring the justice system as these two individuals go through it. Could Chief, as you mentioned, with regards to. Could we just get a date of birth on the two suspects? No, just the age, I'm sorry. Yeah. I just have the age. It appears that they might have shaved their beards. Were they trying to, like, do you think they were trying to change their identity or hide their identity? So it's often very easy for people to change the way they look. And I can't say what their intentions were in that, but. Chief. The, 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 do we more. know more about their background when? they arrive here in the states or no they cross I, legally or illegally or they're if, if there's an ice retainer on them or so no and next to, as uh, chief had mentioned we reached out to hsi and we're going to let them take care of that portion of the investigation and look into it chief Which as you reach out question to, right here, Mario. chief as you reach out to hsi i have to ask were they in any database within hpd already or within harris county and the court system or any of our surrounding counties so I don't have that information. Do we know if they were already in our system? So we, we could, I'll tell you, I don't know, and I apologize. I should know that. But what I'll do is I'll find out uh, if they're already in our system in any way that we've been handled them before, um, you know, and we'll share that. I'd appreciate that. The other quick question on the follow-up with that is that um, with regards to the gang task force or the gang members of HPD, excuse me, the gang officers within, yes, within HPD that were assisting in this, um, do we have confirmation that these men were in, associated with any type of either local or Venezuelan gangs that have a presence here in Houston? So at, at this moment, I have no information to suggest that they, when they, and the team hasn't told me anywhere it's different. Again, we're working with HSI, and you know that within time, that, that may be um, something that's occurred, that they may have affiliations. But I just can't say that for, for sure at this moment. Thank you for finding out about that. Already. Yes, sir. All right. So, Thanks. last question, Lieutenant, what is the, uh, what, what restaurant will the men see at when you begin this timeline? So, I want, again, like the specifics of the incident, I want to kind of leave it to the investigation as it ongoes. And it's in the Northboro area. So, it was not, everything was actually very close in Northboro. Mayor, quick one to you. That's it. Last question. Guys, Mayor. and real quick, as far as the booking photos and court information, once they're formally processed, we get the court assigned, you guys will get the booking photos. We'll post them to our X page. What's the takeaway that you have, Mayor, that we've always heard about community policing, but you really had a community, from what I've been able to gather, separate from what's been confirmed here today, really step up and flood the system with tips going into last night about this? I can, I can assure you, from HPD's perspective, it was all hands on deck. When I was there night before last in the parking lot, you had the HPD investigators going across that area of our community. As has been expressed by Lieutenant Hope through the media, uh, Houstonians of all walks of life have come forward. And uh, there's probably, listening to the officer, no one thing that made this case. It was the <laughs> collaboration of the public, the media, the residents, the retail merchants. I was there when they were asked to allow HPD to 
view their videos. Everyone cooperated, and that's what is great about Houston. We come together during difficult times. This is a difficult time. But Houstonians ought to know they've got a police department that fights crime. The only thing this police department needs is more resources. They've got the expertise, the passion, the experience. We just need additional resources, which we'll be addressing in future days. So it's, uh, it's sad, it's outrageous, it makes you angry, but uh, we're going to court with these individuals and hold them accountable. Hey, folks, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.